Beware the Borg. The cyborgs are coming. They're coming. They're co Whoa! Watch out! Cyborgs! 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 Oh no! Cyborgs! 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 The Borg. Remember on Star Trek? They had implants, augmentations. They communicated with each other as a hive mentality. They had all sorts of electronic implants. It's the realm of science fiction, isn't it? And Star Trek and art? Well, maybe not. There's actually a cyborg recognized by a country as the first living cyborg. His name is Neil Harbison, and he actually has an implant into his brain that allows him to pick up uh, light, color, even signals from satellites and phones. He hears them as a tone. He was born colorblind, and he's an artist. And these days, he actually dresses by what sounds good together, rather than what he might have known went together by uh, what people told him. So it's a very interesting concept that, yes, people are actually starting to get these implants. Okay, well, he's a little odd, and that's a one-off case. What about the rest of us? Well, as we age, our organs may wear out. And as they wear out, we're starting to find out that we may be able to actually find replacements for them. First off, there's an artificial heart by a group in Zurich. It's a 3D, art, a 3D printed artificial heart. Now, that's kind of amazing that they actually could print something and they've actually found it works. The, the problem right now is it only lasts for about 3,000 beats. But the fact that they've, this group has come up with a heart that lasts 3,000 beats, that is a 3D printed uh, organ, organ that could be uh, printed to the size of the person needing it, like a baby or an adult or a large man or a small woman, is absolutely amazing. These things are on the horizon. Next up, there are also two groups, one at the University of San Francisco and one at Vanderbilt uh, University that are working on an artificial kidney. Dr. William H. Fissel of Vanderbilt University is working on one that is made of um, microchip filters and kidney cells and powered by the heart. The University of San Francisco actually has a clinical trial, trial registered uh, to actually test the material in humans. Um, it's open and enrolling right now. It's not, it's not active yet, but it's coming. It's on the horizon. On September 28, 2016, the FDA approved the first hybrid closed-loop system of an artificial pancreas. It's made by a company by the name of uh, Medtronics, uh, and it's intended to automatically monitor blood sugar and adjust basal insulin doses in people with type 1 diabetes. Uh, there are others that are expected to come out as early as 2018. They say some of the first ones may be a bit buggy, but they expect that they will get better as time goes on. But science marches on. There's an artificial lung now that has been tested in sheep. It weighs about four pounds. Um, right now, people who are waiting for lung transplants have to be in bed in a hospital attached to a heart lung machine or a lung machine. Um, but this would be one that would allow people to move about or maybe even in time replace the lung um, as a function or a function of the lung. And it weighs about four pounds. Um, they're starting to do more trials in sheep, so that's another thing that's up and coming. Well. It's a new age. I really think a new age is on the horizon. There are some really great breakthroughs with all the news, with all the negativity out there. I don't understand why we're not seeing more of this in the news. But anyhow, if you're interested in reading more about Neil, the actual cyborg, cyborg brother, his website and a TED talk of his is below. Um, I also want to give thanks to Neil Harbison himself, Tony Tran, Emil96, and J.D. Hancock for the cyborg images that are licensed under the Creative Commons link, uh, Creative Commons Culture license that I've used in the beginning of this video. Meanwhile, see you next week, and beware of the cyborg.